The film opens with a scene of Adam Clay eliminating a beehive in an old warehouse owned by his acquaintance. After completing his duty, he informs the homeowner, Mrs. Eloise Parker, that his work is done. Clay, a beekeeper, has recently been granted permission to reside in one of Mrs. Parker's buildings. He expresses his deep thanks for the kindness he has received during his stay. However, Mrs. Parker declared that Clay had greatly assisted her. She also expressed her appreciation for having a man who looks like a famous actor, Jason Statham, from her favorite movie, Fast and Furious, now living as her neighbor. While Mrs. Parker is working, a warning suddenly appears on her laptop screen, informing her that her hard drive is infected with a virus and urgently needs repair by contacting the number displayed in the advertisement. With a limited understanding of technology, Mrs. Parker immediately believes the advertisement and calls the number. A man named Garnett answers the call promptly and asks Mrs. Parker to download some software. After installation, these scammers gained full access to hack into the victim's computer. Garnett and his group were very happy upon discovering that Mrs. Parker had $2 million. However, the money was funds belonging to a charity she managed. Garnett and his team immediately took all the money from Mrs. Parker's account without wasting time. That night, Clay visited Mrs. Parker's house and heard the fire alarm sounding. Worried that robbers had entered her home, Clay grabbed a knife from the kitchen for protection. However, when he entered the living room, he found Mrs. Parker dead from suicide. Meanwhile, Verona, Mrs. Parker's daughter, and also an FBI member, suddenly pointed a gun at him, mistaking Clay for her mother's killer. The police arriving at the scene immediately investigated and were persuaded that Mrs. Parker died by suicide. However, Verona did not believe her mother had committed suicide. During the interrogation, Clay explained why he visited Mrs. Parker's house to prove he was not the culprit. The police then took Clay to the station for further interrogation. Verona changed her sentiment of Clay after discovering her mother's account was empty. She realized someone had fooled her mother, and that was the reason for Mrs. Parker's suicide. The next day, Verona met Clay and apologized for blaming him unjustly. Verona even invited him for further discussion. Verona explained that her mother had always lived alone, especially after the death of her brother, a former Marine. When Verona showed him the photo, compared Clay to her brother, which might be why Mrs. Parker regarded him as her son. Verona informed Clay that she found that someone had fooled her mother the night before, stealing all the charity money her mother managed. As an FBI agent, Verona had asked her friends to trace the fraudster's location, but even the FBI failed to find them. Clay unpacked one of his beehive boxes and took out a special phone inside. He used this phone to request help from an acquaintance to find the location of the fraudsters who had deceived Mrs. In just a few hours. The acquaintance provided the necessary information. After learning the fraudster's location, Clay immediately went there, carrying two Jerry gasoline cans. When the guards asked what he intended, Clay casually stated his desire to burn the entire building down. At first, they thought Clay was joking until he went upstairs and ordered the fraudsters to stop stealing. They laughed at Clay, but he punched one of the laughing employees and began pouring gasoline, preparing to set the place on fire. Garnett and several of his guards appeared, thinking Clay to be crazy. When Garnett asked who he was, Clay merely stated that he was a beekeeper. Annoyed, Garnett ordered his five guards to beat Clay, but Clay quickly defeated them all. Afterward, Clay set up two bombs that had been modified to explode if a call from a potential victim came through their line. The office was finally destroyed. Garnett reported the incident to his boss, a young man named Derek Danford. During the call, he struggled to explain how terrifying Clay was, having beaten all his guards and destroyed their office. Upon hearing this, Derek immediately ordered Garnett to hire several gangsters to kill Clay. Simultaneously, Verona and other FBI members arrived at the site of the recently exploded building. They considered the incident to be extraordinary and failed to find the perpetrator. After a long search, Garnett and his members found Clay's location. They entered his warehouse and destroyed all the beehives that Clay cared for. Then, they went inside to seek revenge. Without any politeness, they brutally fired their weapons. Thinking they had killed Clay, however, Clay managed to kill the gangsters one by one as they scattered until only Garnett remained, having lost several of his fingers. Verona realized that the burned building was the headquarters of the person who had fooled her mother. They received news that the warehouse next to her mother's house had also burned down. There, they found several charred bodies, including Garnett's employees. They realized that the perpetrator had characteristics similar to Clay, especially after hearing the perpetrator claim to be a beekeeper. On the way, Garnett kept crying over the loss of several fingers. He informed Derek that their action had ended disastrously. As the conversation continued, Clay suddenly appeared and tied Garnett with a rope to his car, 
then dropped the car into the lake. Clay continued the call with Derek and promised to kill him, causing Derek to panic. Derek asks for help from Wallace Westworld, a commissioner in his company and a former CIA director. The high number of victims who had died, along with the perpetrator's confession of being a beekeeper, instilled fear in Wallace. He stated that if Clay was indeed the beekeeper they were referring to, nobody could save Derek's life. This made Derek even more confused about Clay's true identity. Actually, Wallace did not want to confront Clay, but Derek's mother called him personally, asking him to do everything possible to save her son. Derek's mother has great power, but this movie recap has yet to reveal her position. Wallace then called the current CIA director, asking for assistance to determine if Clay indeed was a member of the Beekeeper. Hearing the name, the Beekeeper, immediately caused the CIA director to panic and fear. A few hours later, the director called back to confirm that Clay was indeed a retired member of the Beekeeper. To address this issue, the CIA promptly sent another member of the Beekeeper to eliminate Clay. That night, as Clay was refueling, a female member of the Beekeeper approached him with a large gun and brutally shot at him, leading to a fierce fight. When she couldn't defeat Clay with her attacks, she pulled out a machine gun and started firing wildly. Finally, Clay managed to stop her madness by burning her alive. Before leaving, Clay cut off a finger from the member of the Beekeeper. Soon after, someone informed Wallace that Clay had killed the member of the Beekeeper they had sent, and the CIA decided to withdraw from further involvement. This escalated Wallace's fears. The following day, to defeat Clay, Wallace hired a private security company he trusted, consisting of America's finest former special forces. However, before they started their action, Wallace revealed a program the country had been keeping secret. Wallace had only learned about it after becoming the director of the CIA, and the program's name was The Beekeeper. According to Wallace, The Beekeeper had one sole purpose, to maintain the stability of the established country system. Furthermore, the state authorized the beekeeper forces to determine who must execute and allow living. Meanwhile, Verona visited the site of Clay's battle from the night before. They found many exciting things at the site, including the body of an unidentified member of the beekeepers. They also began to determine Clay's real purpose. Next, a senior FBI official called them both. Verona then presented her investigation findings, believing that Clay would head to the headquarters of the scammers he had set ablaze yesterday because Clay planned to destroy their central server. Therefore, Verona requested the FBI to send a SWAT team to assist at the location. Currently, Clay is at the beekeeper's headquarters. The finger he had cut off before served as access to enter there. Inside the headquarters, various weapons and specialized computers are available, which Clay uses to locate the headquarters of the scammers in Boston. A combined force of the FBI and private security, hired by Wallace, had covered the location Clay intended to destroy. The forces divided their tasks. The SWAT team guarded the ground level, while Wallace's troops watched over the upper floors. You might think Clay would sneak in through the back door and disguise himself. No, Jason Statham doesn't like a movie script that's too ordinary. Clay walked in through the front door, unexpectedly slipping among the SWAT team, discussing how to capture him. It was entirely unexpected that he could hinder 10 SWAT team members without using any weapons. Clay managed to enter the building this way. On the upper floor, Derek, the company's manager, did not want to stop operations, despite the critical situation. Derek then called and requested the brigades they paid to allow his workers to continue working. When Wallace's troops left the room, Clay had already successfully infiltrated among the other workers. The special forces immediately realized Clay's presence and shot at him intensely. However, Clay immediately ran to hide. With so many enemies, Clay had to find a way to eliminate them all. In this scene, we see again that even special forces are no match equal for Clay. Clay quickly defeated the leader of the troops that Wallace had sent. However, since many enemy forces remained, Clay then set traps with steel cables around the elevator and drew them inside. When the enemies took the bait and attempted to shoot Clay simultaneously, they did not realize that Clay had planted a bomb in the elevator. Consequently, the bomb exploded, killing them all. The incident terrified Verona and the FBI members on the lower floor. At the same time, Clay immediately returned to the room to attack the company's manager. Clay wanted to find out who their boss was. Initially, the manager refused to speak, but eventually could not resist the suffering from Clay. The manager revealed that even though Clay knew his identity, he would not dare to attack Derek because he came from no ordinary family. Verona once warned Clay on the upper floor, urging him to surrender. However, before fleeing, Clay declared that the people he intended to punish could not be judged through the court system. Therefore, 
he must destroy them all with his own hands. Because Team Wallace was defeated, Wallace stated that the only way to protect Derek at this moment was by taking refuge behind his mother's power, who turned out to be the President of the United States. Verona and his friend also realized that Derek would be the next target. Hence, they instructed the FBI director to be on alert since the President's family was in danger. Nevertheless, Verona revealed that Derek's company had been using its profits to fund his mother's campaign. The following day, the President's residence was swarming with armed forces in anticipation of Clay's arrival. Wallace explained that the President's security forces were not strong enough to defeat Clay, so he hired a mercenary named Lazarus. Lazarus was known for killing one of the beekeepers, though he claimed it was luck. At that time, Clay was making his way through the sewage system. Upon reaching the tunnel's end, he emerged under a car being inspected. However, Clay's goal was not to sneak under the vehicle, but to steal the clothes of a guarding officer. Before entering the main building, Clay had also secretly planted several bombs. Inside the house, a party for conglomerates was taking place. While Derek talked with the guests, his mother suddenly called him to meet with a senior FBI official to discuss the illegal funds flowing into his company. Derek appeared panicked because his mother was unaware he had deceived many people. Clay suddenly drew everyone's attention, making them realize his presence unexpectedly inside the building, which shocked them all. He directed everyone to chase him out toward the garden. By gathering them all at once, Clay, just as Lazarus was about to kill him, detonated a bomb and once again escaped very quickly. Next, he headed to the room where Derek and his mother were hiding. However, the path would not be easy since it was filled with combined forces. Yet, Clay cleared all his enemies as if they, numbering in the dozens, were no challenge at all. Derek was currently having a fierce argument with his mother. Both also appeared panicked after receiving information that Clay was heading to their room. However, as an honest leader, Derek's mother stated they must take responsibility for all their actions, including facing arrest by law enforcement if necessary. After successfully defeating the SWAT forces, Clay once again faced Lazarus. This second battle was fiercely contested as Lazarus, with his considerable power, managed to stab Clay in the stomach. However, Clay, the bald, always found a way to eliminate his enemy. Before entering the room where Derek was hiding, Wallace tried to stop Clay. Coincidentally, the two had known each other in the past. Wallace attempted to halt Clay, but the ball declared that this was not just about a destroyed system, but also personal, because Derek had killed someone dear to Clay. Before Clay broke down the door, Derek, emotional because his mother did not defend him, chose to kill the senior FBI official trying to restrain him. At the same moment Clay managed to enter, Derek used his mother as a human shield. After Clay succeeds in killing Derek, he immediately escapes by jumping out of the window. Verona could have been fired initially, but she realized that only Clay could achieve justice for her mother. Indirectly, Verona thanked Clay for his assistance. From there, Clay headed straight to the beach where he had stored various diving gear. From that moment, Clay disappeared from the surface.